Hey guys, and welcome to the new episode of Automated Seller Podcast. Today I have a special guest, Brad Sahradnik. Uh, hi, Brent. How are you doing? Hey, Jacob. I'm doing well. I'm doing very well. It's hot here, but awesome. I'm doing well. Oh, yeah, it's hot here as well. So Brent is uh, actually a founder of AMZ Pathfinder, which is the advertisement Amazon agency. And he's an Amazon speaker. We actually met on one of the conferences uh, in at, at Tel Aviv um, That's right. in Israel. That's right. And we'll see each other soon in uh, Lithuania as well. Like I know, Brent, that you'll be a speaker there as well. And actually, I would love to start... Um, here with this, like if you could give us a little bit of the background, uh, how did you start with whole Amazon journey with the AMZ Pathfinder, also with like your, um, like basically history with yeah. becoming a speaker and becoming a kind of like a leader in the industry. Yeah. I mean, very generous of you to say that. I, I'm not sure if I would take it that far, but uh, yeah, I've definitely <laughs> spoken at conferences and go on podcasts like this one. So thanks for the invite. Much appreciated. And uh yeah, really enjoyed meeting you in Tel Aviv. That was quite a conference. Good one. Oh, yeah. That um, was really but good. But yeah, one. how did I get started with Pathfinder? I mean, it's actually a long story. The Pathfinder as a company will be eight years old in August. So, uh, you know, at the time of this okay. reporting, it's next month. Um, and so, you know, how did we start? It's like, that's kind of like the dawn of Amazon ads, really. I feel like I've been there since the beginning. Amazon only launched uh, paid advertising in the end of 2014. And it was the summer of 2015 that I first played around with it. Uh, of course, it was very basic at that time, but I had an acquaintance uh, local to where I was living at the time, and he was selling uh, products that were locally sourced in the U.S. This was in back in um, the U.S. And uh, yeah, he was like, hey, there's ads on Amazon. And I was like, there's ads on Amazon? I've never seen ads. I shop on there. I don't see ads. And he's like, yeah, yeah, sponsored products. I was like, okay. And uh, he's like, you used to work on like campaigns like this, didn't you? Uh, yeah, I did. I did, you know, B2B Google advertising for a couple of years okay. at, a, at a B2B marketing firm. Um, and so I had a pretty good working knowledge of Google Analytics and Google Ads back at that time, 2012, 13, 14, when I did that. And then, uh, yeah, this is 2015 yet again. And I set up some campaigns. And I was like, this is super simple. Because at that time, there, I, I don't remember if they even were match types. I think everything was just broad. It's just like put putting keywords is just like, all right, we're good. Because the cost per click was <laughs> anywhere from two to eight cents. It was extremely so it was, cheap. It was right? much cheaper, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And the product that he was selling in particular was uh, industrial and scientific, which even to this day is a very, like, you know, not competitive category, relatively speaking. And so the cost per clicks there were, uh, yeah, really cheap. And the product was $89. And as soon as you got a couple sales, you're paying six cents a click. It's like, well, obviously the math on this works out very well. Okay. Uh, and that kind of set me down this path of like, huh, maybe there's something to this. I had started other uh, attempts at like online businesses that, you know, a lot of us go through if we're trying to figure out some kind but of- But actually, have you, have you sold anything on Amazon before? Like, or I have. You were just- I, did some, okay. I did some FBM. Yeah, I, um, mm -hmm. I won't say exactly what it was, but like I, I had some products that I was selling FBM and that's actually how I learned the ropes. And I also sent a lot of products in FBA that I would find. I did some like basic retail arbitrage back then. And that was like, I mean, you can scale that business even today, oh, yeah. probably to a huge level, but I wasn't interested in having like tons of inventory and, uh, you know, a fleet of trucks and people buying stuff at Walmart or discount or whatever, you know, to do retail inventory, but it helped me understand the mechanism behind, uh, FBA, you know, fulfillment by Amazon and why that okay. was such a key piece of the puzzle, because that was the part that really took away the struggle of fulfillment, which is really the big challenge with e-commerce. If you have good marketing and good product, well, you still need to figure out where things are physically stored and all that very unsexy work of, well, how much is it per cubic foot? How do I ship it from here to here? You know, there's a lot of uh, frustrations that come along with that potentially, but Amazon kind of disambiguated that away. And that's what made FBA so interesting. And that's why it was such a big thing in the early days of 2015, 16, 17, when people were selling it as like a make money online kind of thing. Now, yeah. I would say uh, the, you can still watch those fake gurus uh, promoting yeah. this on Dude, YouTube. You can have like all the Lamborghinis so and rented mansions you want. I'll, <laughs> I'll you tell you one funny that. thing here before we continue, because I think it, it's worth mentioning. So we are building custom software for Amazon sellers. But at some point, we used a keyword Amazon automation. Mm. And I was reaching out to some guys running agencies uh, like Amazon agencies, right on LinkedIn. Yeah. And then there was this one guy who said, oh, Amazon, auto because I, I had like something like we built um, tools and automations for Amazon. And he replied to me because I was like, hey, let's get to know each other. We work with many agencies. We build custom software solutions and so on. And he replied, oh, 
Amazon automation scam. And I was like, wait, what? And then I Google it, right? And then I saw all of those guys doing this Amazon automation, selling you the stores that is like passive income and stuff. And I was like, no, no, right. no, that's not right. what we do. Yeah. So. If you hear Amazon, yeah, just a piece of advice for the audience. And your audience is probably pretty savvy. So this is not maybe not news to them. But if you hear like passive income and Amazon in the same sentence, run the other direction as fast as yeah. possible. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> someone's trying to sell you something that's a dream. Uh, I mean, Amazon's great, don't get me wrong, but it is not passive income. <laughs> it's far from it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. So basically, that's, that's, I uh, just wanted to, 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 to tell that. But yeah, um, so you, you said that you came very early for Amazon advertisement, right? Yeah. And it, it yeah. kind of worked out for you. And that's how the AMZ Pathfinder got created, or? Yeah, that's, that's the origin between. story. So I started consulting mm -hmm. in the early days. It was a lot of people on Facebook groups um, and like word of mouth got a lot of clients from friends of friends of friends and people mm -hmm. in my personal network, um, people that I work with would refer me to other people. And it was just me for a while. I started hiring at the end of 2016, like seriously hiring like full-time people, not just like a part-time yeah. person here and there and grew from there. I uh, had a business partner join in early 2018, who was a former client who sold, which back in the day was quite a big thing to have an exit from an Amazon business in 2018. That was unheard of. Of course, oh, yeah. and you know, during there, the there were no aggregators in uh, that instance, year. Or? No, they didn't exist yet. That was totally, I think okay. it was a private equity deal or you know some other larger company that wanted it. I don't actually know the details, but sold for a nice exit, and then became a business partner, someone who has a good business network, and has been kind of a mentor and coach and friend to me. So mm -hmm. uh, yeah, definitely a positive positive impact on life. And now we're uh, I don't know twenty or twenty one people at Pathfinder, excluding me. Um, and uh, yeah, just been kind of steady this year. This year has been a bit tough with the recession or I can potential see. recessions yeah. in the U.S., some economic turbulence. But we're, hold, we're holding in there. We're doing all right. Um, so That's yeah, awesome. we're, I, we're, we're bracing for Prime Day, which is soon. <laughs> oh, yeah. And, and how, how did you actually become a speaker at Amazon conferences? Yeah, good question. Um, I'm, I'm someone who's very social uh, and outgoing. So I would go to conferences and talk to people, uh, especially in the early days. There were many conferences in Europe that were small. Um, you know, a couple hundred people at most get in a room, maybe they spend a day or at most two days and got to know a lot of people, including the organizers. And eventually mm -hmm. one or two of them were like, Hey, you know, you have an agency, you seem to know a lot. Why don't you speak? And I was always like, no, no, I never, <laughs> spoke. I'm scared of speaking, which is true. I had a public speaking class back in university that I think I, oh, wow. I almost failed. Um, didn't do such <laughs> a good job, but now I actually really enjoy it. So it's like so many things in life. It's like building a muscle, you know, you, you, you lift the weight, it hurts the first time you, you drink the protein shake, you eat the, you eat the chicken, you get stronger, the muscle grows, yeah. you lift the weight. Oh, it's easier now. I can do it better. Yeah. And you know, soon enough, you're doing bent bench presses with, uh, with a full on speaking gig, 35 minutes. So the talk I'm given in uh, Lithuania, like you mentioned is 45 minutes. So, you know, that's, 45 that's, minutes. What that's is a pretty about? big talk. Uh, I'm going to be talking about sponsored brands, uh, specifically mm -hmm. how it kind of fits in the ecosystem. Um, and w what changes there have been, you know, over the, all these years, cause that's an ad type that's had a lot of changes, mm -hmm. but it's also been kind of neglected. So it's an interesting story. I'm going to be trying to tell that story. So really yeah. what speaking is, is trying to tell people an interesting story on stage that will stick with them. One of the biggest mm -hmm. sins that I see in talks is I'm going to get on stage and I'm going to tell you 17 things. And the audience remembers one of them. Much oh, better yeah. to tell them three things, repeat it a bunch of times, and then they walk away with three important lessons or things that can go action. So speaking really is a, a lesson in paring things down and like minimization versus Let's throw the whole kitchen sink at someone and just hope that they remember part of it. Um, and I think that's that's the sign of a good talk if you have intelligent questions at the end and you leave people wanting yeah. a little bit more. Uh, that's for sure. I mean, if if, if, if if the Q, QA is there, right, then it means, yeah, people got really involved and they yes. were really listening to you. And then, yeah, if you can actually leave the audience with some key, like key, take away, key takeaways, then yeah. like if it's even one, two, three, then it's sick. Then it's awesome. So uh, that's great. I mean, I, I'm really get, trying to get into public speaking. Uh, I only spoke on like for some very small events uh, mm -hmm. or at universities, um, like, Actually, I, I was in two different universities and then I, I dropped out from one and then mm -hmm. I was actually a speaker there, more on like a business side of running a software agency. And then I, yeah. I did something similar in Berlin as well. So I'm, I'm really trying to, to get there very slowly. Now here at the podcast, it was also like kind of the same in, in the beginning. I was super shaky. I didn't know what to ask. Uh, I, I, I was scared, but now... Well, I got to put some like, real respect on your name, Jacob, because you speak how many languages? Polish, obviously. 
I know you speak German. I speak German, but it's not fluent. I actually am mm-hmm. half German. I was born there, but I know, unfortunately, I know. That's why yeah. I know you speak some <laughs> yeah. German. So yeah, I mean, I, I speak becomes, some German. You're doing mm-hmm. a podcast in a language that's not your native language. I couldn't do a podcast oh, yeah. in Polish. I guarantee you. <laughs> so I couldn't even do yeah. it in French. And I live in France. My French is okay, but it's not good enough that I could host people from all over the world and talk to them. So some, you know, respect for that. I, I've only ever done public speaking engagements in English. I haven't done them in oh, French yeah. or Spanish. Yeah. Or anything, so. I feel like w- with English, it's, um, I don't know, I don't think that much, right? When when in Polish, when I would do like a public speaking, I, I'd mm. be thinking too much, like what was the next word? And here, I don't really have the option. So I just say what I want to say and that's it. So <laughs> <laughs> that's a big difference how, how I look at that. Um, I think I'm just more confident also in English. Like I remember when, when I was uh, living in, in, in Germany and just even like meeting with girls, I, I yeah. felt like my game in English... <laughs> was just much better <laughs> and smoother than in, in Polish. So, but yeah, you, you had that, um, you had that, um, a, a American confidence with you. Yeah. You, you're speaking American be. English. You, you had that stupid American confidence where we're always like, yeah, we know everything. Come on. Of course. <laughs> you know? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Might be. But anyway, let's get back to um, the main um, topic of, of the podcast. So I actually want to ask you um, more about running the AMZ Path Finder uh, and building the, this agency. So sure. when you're like, running the advertisement agency, like what are your main services that actually you offer for the clients? What are critical for brands to succeed? Yeah, so let me, let me actually back up because for years we just did advertising. So like... Mm-hmm we just do Amazon ads and people would say, Oh, we didn't do full account management or why don't you optimize this or look at this or why don't you do Facebook advertising? It's like, we want to do one thing and do one thing really well. We've since expanded that scope a little bit um, to do things that kind of touch and influence Amazon advertising too. So Amazon advertising is a big umbrella. You have Amazon DSP, Mm -hmm. you have Amazon marketing cloud, Amazon marketing stream now, very interesting data sources, which of course, you know a lot about. Uh, we have ad, ad console, which is like the traditional, you know, three major campaign types. But we also do listing and uh, I would say like conversion rate optimization. And we do like a Google to Amazon service now too. Which is a full Actually, I really wanted to product. ask about that because I think yeah. you had the first agency who I saw that listed this as a service. I've never really heard about that. Uh, well, I didn't even it know it's, more than it's possible. Yeah, we, yeah I didn't even know it's possible. So how, how does it this work possible. actually? Could you tell yeah, us? Yeah, I mean, a we could do a whole hour long podcast just about this. I gave a presentation in uh, Barcelona <laughs> a few months ago about this topic, and it, it got a lot of uh, pretty good response mm-hmm. from people. They were interested. But basically, the core idea is this, Jacob. Like, we have all this demand because what we're doing with ads on Amazon is just channeling demand, right? There's a lot of people that are on there with their credit cards ready, trying to buy stuff. <laughs> um, and yeah. we want to make sure that the products that are from our clients that are relevant are shown to those people at the right time when they're in the right mood, when they're in the right purchasing attitude, right? So what is Google? It's a giant search engine. People are using it for navigation. They're using it for information. They're using it for who knows what. They're Googling things about health. They're Googling, they're trying to, it's your mom. She's trying to find Facebook. She types Facebook into Google. You know, like that's a, that's a navigational query. But there's a lot of people who are trying to shop with Google too. So we're trying to carve off that piece of the uh, intent from people that are trying to find products, especially if they put, um, you know, running blue running shoe Amazon. Well, that person probably has a pretty high search intent to go to Amazon, right? You figure that they're putting it in the query, they're interested. Yeah. And oftentimes in at least the English speaking internet, the Anglo world, when you're typing things in Google, you receive a lot of uh, results that are on Amazon already. So people are quite yeah. accustomed to, uh, this is a known traffic pathway that I can use. Uh, I can type something into Google and it'll take me to the Amazon listing that's highly ranked for this. There are ways to optimize Amazon listings so they show up better with Google in the first place. Uh, so there's, there's a little bit of trick to that. But what we're talking about for this conversation is paid advertising. So we all know that Google is funded by advertising. That's how they make billions of dollars. That's how oh, they yeah. afford to do all the other crazy stuff they do, like Android, for example. <laughs> uh, you know, All the other products, they have Gmail, which is free uh, and is incredible. Think about that. Um, and then understand the relationship between those two companies. You know, Amazon, a huge part of their traffic organically is also from Google, like a from, huge yeah. section of it. So these tech giants, they have a somewhat uneasy relationship with each other. It's kind of a frenemies situation. But if you have Amazon attribution, which is a free platform on one end, and then you have Google ads on the other end and you use a software like we do uh, to tie them together, you can mm-hmm. actually um, do a pretty good job of understanding what keywords are the ones that are actually drawing sales and conversions and potential organic rank uplift, 
um, which is like really why we're doing this. So we use these focused uh, Google PPC campaigns to take that intent and traffic and make sure that it gets to the right place on Amazon. So people see an ad, they understand this is an Amazon ad, they understand it's for a product, they click on it, it aligns with their expectations. Now they're on Amazon.com or .co.uk or .ca, whatever. That, that's awesome. Do, do you and think it's like kind of like not that saturated uh, way of doing ads yet? Like, I mean, yeah. when you co co you know compete on keywords on Amazon uh, on on some very saturated products, it's super Good expensive. Point. But if, if you actually it do it for Google, it seems like kind of like a secret uh, <laughs> formula to win on Amazon. Right, and there's other considerations there too, man, because like you can think, oh, well, aren't people also advertising on these products and trying to get people to their D2C sites, like a Shopify page or a Magento or whatever, your, your e-com platform of choice. That's true, and some of our clients are doing that. So we have you know separate campaigns that are like, this is for Amazon, this is for your, your website, and maybe they're managing that themselves or another agency is. But you are right, there is what's called like a CPC arbitrage. So you know, supplements is maybe a, an obvious example, but you know, mm -hmm. it's very expensive on Amazon. And maybe for some of these keywords that you're bidding a lot of money on Amazon, four or five, six dollars a click, uh, mm -hmm. which is possible. It's terrible, but it is possible. Wow. You can yeah. maybe find it for, uh, you know, two or three dollars a click or maybe even less on Google and then channel that demand. And what we've found in our testing and the clients we run it for, just just a handful of them now, uh, you know, not like hundreds or dozens, like, you know, we got a, got a, we got some in there, but what we found with our, our data and our sample set is basically if you can prove to Amazon that you have a sustained, you know, high click through rate, high conversion, high quality, uh, channel of external paid traffic, you can influence the organic rank for a certain keyword. So it's like, okay, this blue running shoes, we're sending people through and getting them to the Amazon listing uh, on that keyword. Mm -hmm. The attribution is taking care of it and tracking it. We can see that it's having an impact on the organic lift if we're tracking that. And we usually track that in two or three different softwares to coordinate and make sure that it's not, oh, well, yeah. you know, telling us telling us one thing and one tool, and then we're like, it's working well. And then we look on Amazon, <laughs> ah, it's actually oh, lying no. to us. So yeah, we use a couple of things to like triangulate that data. Um, but, but that's but basically that's the, just the awesome. What, what you said, right? That that, that you can actually improve your organic search through paying to the ads. I actually watched uh, some podcasts, I think the other day, uh, when, when actually it blew my mind, right? I was like, why mm -hmm. would I do, why would I even invest into the advertisement in the first place? If I don't have to, I would just do something organic. But then actually this guy said, and it makes completely sense that Amazon intention is to actually sell as much as possible, right? So if something is right. selling just by boosted to, through the ads, and it's selling more. It it it, it by by default it will be selling also more uh, organically because people are just interested into this this product. So it, it's really interesting to see this. Um, uh, how how to say it in English? Um, man, connection. Remember, you, don't, between... you, do, you told me you don't think in English. <laughs> just go. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> connections between those two. But no, no. Um, now I just wanted to ask you also, especially for uh, Google Ads and since you also have the experience from the past into that, what are your thoughts uh, about the AI searches? Because, I mean, we see right now that Google is introducing the new AI searches. And um, how, like, do you think it will have, like, a kind of, like, big influence on Amazon overall? Like, especially for Google, but not only there, because mm -hmm. the AI, I think Amazon is also working on the AI a search engine uh, on Amazon itself, right? So do you think that the game or, or all of the rules will change or will be affected? That's a good question. Um, to dwell on AI for a second, I mean, a AI in its modern iteration, let's call it LLMs, large language models, right? The one that really made a big splash, ChatGPT, late last year. That's the one that's really sparked all this new, new interest. AI in different forms you know, not general AI, but specific application, specific AI has been around on, I think, Google and Amazon both for a long time. Like part of the algorithm that dictates, you know, A9, that's that Amazon search is like, probably has pieces of AI that we would recognize now as like, oh, that's artificial intelligence, but algorithmically, uh, I am not an expert on this stuff. So I'm, I'm making some conjecture here, but I will say uh, we know for a fact, because Amazon's announced it, they are starting to summarize uh, product reviews on listings with AI and then put those summaries on the actual individual pages for a product listing. That's very interesting. AI is very good at summarizing things. If you give it a big chunk of text, it'll oh, yeah. break it into bullet points for you, pull out common themes. That's really powerful. Um, how Google's going to use that with search, uh, that remains to be seen. I think 
Uh, I've used Bard, you know, Google's um, yeah, beta. Exactly. For that. We have that enabled. Th- that's what I was talking about, Pathfinder. basically. Yeah, yeah, Bard. Bard. I haven't been as impressed with it. We pay for and use um, ChatGPT 4.0 at Pathfinder and use plugins for that because that's mm-hmm. has a lot of obvious business use cases for us with like content generation and summarizing and helping with email campaigns, all these things. But back to the Amazon thing. I'm not so sure that Amazon is going to roll it out fast. Like one thing I'll say about Amazon's marketplace is it's looked largely the same for a very long time. If you look at screenshots of Amazon from 2005, 2004, even earlier, like, okay, it looks like web 1.0, you know, things are real basic, but the same core principles are kind of there. And I think the reason for that is Amazon has a vested interest in making sure that people come to the site and it feels safe and familiar and easy to use. You want to be able to use it, Jacob. Now you're extremely technologically advanced, but Amazon also wants grandma to be able to use it. They don't want to make things too crazy. (laughs) And they want to stick with like what I would identify as like the Western way of doing e-commerce. You look at uh, a Chinese e-commerce website and the way that uh, Chinese e-commerce works, it's extremely different. And I think in the West, we're not at the point or maybe we'll never be ready or interested in the way that China does e-commerce. Like, they do a lot of like live streaming sales during certain events. Yeah. Amazon's tried time and time again to make that a thing, and I think it's not sticking. So how much are they going to incorporate? Enough that it helps, but not too much that it scares people off and scares off grandma from shopping on <laughs> Amazon. I have an 84-year-old neighbor here in France, and he shops on Amazon all the time. They want to make sure that he is still comfortable in there. He's probably not too interested in AI. So okay. I- I'm not like, it's going to change everything. Like It's going to change things for us, sure. I mean... People on my team, multiple team members are using it right now. Do I think Mm -hmm. that Amazon is going to make some wholesale changes to their whole interface and everything, the way people interact and shop? No. Do I think they're going to work it into Alexa, voice search? Uh, Is there going to be a a facility where you can have a conversation with Alexa or an AI tool and like figure out what you want vocally by doing it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's going to happen. Sure. But that's maybe something that a small percentage of people will use. Uh, and then yeah. how will ads work into that? I don't know. It could be pretty cool. Uh, Amazon already has audio ads, actually. Those exist already. So. Oh, that's 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 nice. I didn't know yeah. that. But yeah, I, I, I like your answer, and, and especially about changing like interface and so on. I mean, it, it's super old. And it the, is. the thing is, it works. Yes. But what people hate <laughs> the most is they hate to change the habits, right? So they have, right. they, they, have, they have the habit. They go to Amazon. They buy the stuff. They don't want to learn the new way of doing it, right? So if this right. works, it works. <laughs> So yeah, we might we might see slight um, features coming to uh, products like Alexa, as you said. Uh, but yeah, yeah, it was just interesting to hear your your opinion, and especially on the other side um, of running the ads. Like if there will be like a new way of actually creating the ad, um, maybe I don't know. Instead of the keywords, it will be like putting some secret. Um, and things to the image so the ai will recognize the image and if you like create a prompt i i'm looking for like a i know a cap with a beer bear on it then it will you know scan it and give right, you it back right. it'll, it'll be i'm always like very interested into that yeah exactly. that's cool like it learns what the image is i mean one, one application we do and i've seen used for sure is like writing headlines for um ad copy which you know you don't have in every ad type on amazon but more and more you have a lot of creative flexibility and freedom and using things like mid journey to create an image or um, modifying mm-hmm. things with like AI augmented um, Photoshop, which we've all seen those videos where it does like the autofill. That stuff is crazy, right? It's like, yeah, here, here's yeah. me. I at think a lake. Can- Canva has it as well. Zoom out. Now uh, here's me at a bigger lake, like this, these crazy yeah. photos, writing headlines, oh, yeah. like all that can be done with AI and assisted. So that can really speed up workflows. And that's how I look at it as an agency owner, right? Cause I want to make sure that the people on my team are empowered to, do their jobs as fast as and effectively as as possible. So that's you know my my vested interest in that. <laughs> exactly, especially as an agency owner, I think it's it's crucial for us to adapt um, and actually start using the tools right. So instead of complaining that AI will take our jobs, replace us, um, right. we really need to adapt uh, into that. So, I mean, there's a lot of rumors that oh yeah, there will be no programmers in the five years, and then I'm running the dev shop, I'm having a team of twenty people. And I'm like, no way. All right, guys, we just got to learn those tools and make our job much mm-hmm. faster. And that that's mm-hmm. what we do, actually. We use AI on a daily basis. There's GitHub Copilot. There's ChatGPT. There are plugins to ChatGPT. We use all of that. Um, I think the and we already stuff see. is maybe one of the most compelling use cases because it's all, it's all structured, right? And AI can understand the rules to a programming language. You can feed it information. Exactly. I mean, there, there are crazy tools right now to like rewrite uh, some web app 
from one programming language to another, right? And th- th- that just blew my mind because this this used to be a service for. I mean, it's it's still a service for some some companies, right? Yeah. And you can just um, go and and they will, will do it for you. But yeah, we'll we'll see. I, I I was just curious to to hear what are your thoughts. Now let's go back to actually AMZ Pathfinder because sure. especially since you're running it, you said for already for eight years, right? Yeah. Yeah. I would love to hear some of the success story uh, that you could share with us. Some client that came to you, you scaled that brand or the, or the shop. If you could tell us, I'm I'm really curious. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I try to think of one like off the top of my head, but we um, one thing I, I think I am quite proud of, although it has been detrimental to our business success in terms of revenue, of course, is we've had many many clients that have exited. Right. So they have had oh that's awesome. um, a business that they've built sometimes themselves, sometimes with a partner, sometimes with a husband or wife. Uh, and they have uh, grown it over the course of three, four, five years. We helped them with ads for two or three of those years at the end, got it to a place where it was really profitable, great great, um, great EBITDA, good exit potential, strong products, and then they sell. Of course, we lose them as a client typically because these aggregators or other private you know, equity or money interests have their own system of doing things and we offboard. Mm-hmm. That's unfortunate, but I, I put those like feathers in my cap because that means that, hey, we helped build this business that was so valuable that someone gave them $5 million for it. Oh, wow. It's like, that's pretty cool. You know, sometimes more than $5 million, sometimes less. We've had some exits that are definitely, um, yeah, yeah, 10, 10, 10 million and up uh, for sure. So, you know, I guess that's eight, what, eight figures. So that's pretty cool. Now, um, proud of that. I mean, when I think about specific businesses, there's a one that we work with presently that's uh, sports equipment and we've been with them for a long time and we've helped them grow that to the point where they're spending um you know oh i I won't say it publicly but you know a lot of money each month on ads doing so profitably the owners have really hired um many more layers of people underneath them they're not as involved anymore the business runs really well and seeing how that kind of like life-changing generational wealth and brand has been established uh for those people their families the team they now employ that has good jobs like that all feels good. You know, that, that, that feels like what That's I like awesome. with Pathfinder too, which is like having a very good company culture, having a solid team with really good A players, everyone's involved and they feel bought into the company. That matters a lot to me. Um, That's awesome. It, it seems like you're kind of extending the company, right? Like you, you treat their employees also like kind of like your partners, you work with them at yeah. On a daily basis. Like that's exactly how we also do that with, with our clients. We always want to grow with a company, right? If, if a client goes to us, we yeah. always think about the long term collaboration. So if the, we if we build like some enterprise tool, uh, a web application, some uh, sc- automation script, we always mm-hmm. are looking for our next features. We never want to lose a um, client, just finish the work, and that's it. Uh, I know that there's uh, a lot of freelancers and, and both of, of our words. I mean, you do. Um, advertisement, we build software, but the collaboration with clients is very similar. So you can always yeah. go to Upwork, fi- find a freelancer who will help you uh, and finish the collaboration with you and leave you basically. But that's not the case right. here. Right. So I-, I really like it. Yeah. And, and you know, uh, to, to talk business a little bit, like our average customer lifetime value is like very high as an agency, right? Because people pay us, you know, a couple grand a month, sometimes you know more than that to work with us. And um, we're in it for the long haul. You know, most of our clients we've had for two, three years in excess, like uh, the ones that have been with us for a long time. And we're, as most agencies I think are these days, you know, increasingly picky about who we work with, who's the right fit. Um, And it's not just like, hey, do you have ads? Are you spending a bunch of money? Let's run them for you. That's where the discussion ends. It's more like, what's the long-term plan for the business? What's the trajectory? Kind of like, what makes your brand special and unique? On Amazon, you need you need advantages. You can't just be like the the sixteenth person to sell the the garlic press, right? The it's not the passive income. Because uh, <laughs> like, what makes that unique? You know, is it is it something about the branding? Is it the family story? So, totally. so do you also help now? with uh? Do you also help with um? Like all, like, is it only like an advertisement agency, or you also help like to optimize listings, um, create pictures, yeah, uh, yeah, run like the I account? Yeah, like I mentioned earlier, yeah, we do we do listing optimization and okay. conversion rate optimization. We so don't you also really do like with like, a st- like mm-hmm. if you come to us and you're like an existing brand, uh, my our sister company called Sellerplex, they do that. Uh, my my business partner who I mentioned earlier, he is mm-hmm. a company that does Amazon services. So we work uh, quite closely with them, you know, hand oh, that's in hand so. to do that kind of stuff, and then. We kind of take it from there. You know, they get things set up. We start the awesome. ads. So you also coordinate build like a together. strategy for for a client how to actually run a, the whole business over years. Right. 
Right. And they do other things like logistics, um, financial mm -hmm. uh, forecasting, uh, business valuations, some of the more what I would call like the less sexy parts of Amazon. Things that need to be done are very important. Oh, yeah. But people love ads. I have a, I have a bigger theory, Jacob, which I've noticed over the years, which is that people love ads because it's one of these things that the business owner can do and they can go in and they can like click around and do things. And like, sometimes you can save money or sometimes you can make money. It depends how good you are at advertising. Sometimes you print money. you can money. feel busy. You can feel effective. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's really, it, it feels good to go in there and like do all the things. But when you do that for um, like logistics and like uh, forecasting and planning, you're like falling asleep. It's like boring. Unless that's your passion, totally. in which case, you know, go with God. That's great. Enjoy. Yeah. <laughs> totally. But, uh, Ads is one of these things that people love to talk about because it is one of these levers that a business owner can can pull and they can see immediate impacts within a week, two weeks, whatever. They can say, oh, we shot up rank for this keyword or now we're making $100 a day profit on this keyword because I did a good job with bidding and the ad looks killer. It's like, all right, that's good. But you know, as the business owner, should you be doing that? Should you have someone hired full or part-time to do it? Maybe. Should you hire an agency mm -hmm. to do it? Maybe. There's a lot of different ways to do this. You know, agency is not right for everybody, but it's right for a lot of people. So totally. uh, that's kind of where totally. I see our, our so, value, so value who, prop. Who do you actually recommend to even consider working with the agency? Like at, at which point of your Amazon business uh, should you start considering it? Because I believe not from scratch, not not right away. Like I think No, no, I think right away you should probably uh, take a PPC course or something. Uh, there's a lot of them out there. There's tons of free content on YouTube. Uh, which is uh, which is also very good. You know, don't don't pay thousands of dollars for a PPC course for Amazon. <laughs> maybe a maybe a couple hundred bucks is good. Or join a community, um, yeah. Join a Facebook group, ask questions, get active, uh, and run it yourself. You know, that's a good way to learn a lot. Now, do you need to become an expert? No, you can learn the 70, 80 percent, and that last 20, 30 percent you can have a freelancer or a full time person or an agency come in and do. The difference with an agency is that you're hiring a whole team, right? So you have a bunch of different perspectives. You have usually well-established systems and processes, a person who's your communication. Like we have client communication people. Their job is to talk to the clients. They know a lot about ads. They don't run the accounts themselves. That's the account manager's job. But you also get to talk to the account manager. They join on calls. They're the ones making reports for you. So there's like a relationship that you build and they have context and they understand the direction your business is going ideally. And, you know, they understand your long-term goals and how we fit into it. That's what makes an agency like a good agency, in my opinion, is that relationship, awesome. the communication, the context uh, that someone will also have if they're internal. If you, But then, of course, you have to hire them, manage them, worry about the HR. So there's downsides to internal. Everything is a balance, man. Everything is oh, yeah. a, everything oh, is yeah. a uh, you know, seesaw <laughs> between the two. Um, and I think it's really appropriate to start thinking about an agency if you're spending, let's say, like 10, 15, 20K USD a month. That's a really good time to think, all right, this is a substantial amount of money. This is having a big impact on my Amazon channel. Should we hire an agency? Think about it. It's a good time to yeah, do it. Yeah, I like it. I like it. I really like it. Yeah, perfect. Brent, um, that was awesome episode, actually. Thanks a lot for coming. And yeah. I'll just have like a uh, last question to you, more like, where people can find you, how can people go try AMZ Pathfinder services? Yeah, sure. Um, so we're at uh, www.amzpathfinder.com. You can do uh, forward slash report on that if you want to. We have a quarter three report. Uh, if you're listening to this in quarter four, we update it every quarter. So <laughs> we basically look at the last quarter, look at some things that are like the big news items that we think are going to be impactful in the next quarter. And we give some like stats about our management and like mm -hmm. our thoughts about What's the quarter going to hold? Um, so we we publish that at the beginning of each quarter for that quarter. Go download it, check it out. Um, and you can find me personally at brent.bike. My website is www.brent.bike, which I know, uh, Jacob, you have because I sent it to you when we met and I gave him my WhatsApp. Uh, but that's just for me personally. That also links back to Pathfinder, but that has other awesome. like, social and stuff on there for me. Awesome. I'll make sure to put it also to like a podcast description. So uh, you, you can all have like, access to that immediately Much so yeah brent thanks a lot uh and we'll see each other soon in lithuania yes we will i look forward to it man very much so awesome thank you bye bye yeah thanks <laughs>